Hey Floss Tube, I'm back. It's Leslie with That Cat Flossing. And I know I had mentioned a couple of times um, on some of my um, previous floss tubes and on I think Stitch Mania or Cross Stitch Addicts that I was working on some project bags. And I found wonderful tutorials by Vonna Epperson Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher, and by Suzette, the Primitive Stitcher. And I can recommend both of those to you. They are extremely um, concise and, and organized and if I can do it, you can do it kind of thing. Um, and I will put links to both of those in the comments when we're done. Um, so, let's get started. Uh, the first bag I made was um, the one with the pattern from Suzette, the um, Primitive Stitcher. And this is it. It is a zipper bag. It's got a 14-inch zipper in the top. It's lined with a contrasting fabric. Now, you could do it all out of one fabric if you wanted to, but I did what she suggested and used the three different colors just because I like pretty colors. But you can do it however you want. One, one material would be fine. Um, my zipper foot arrived. I got the zipper in without a tremendous amount of difficulty. I noticed a comment from Lynette, um, who does home setting on the home front, uh, that she had installed multiple zippers on her bags without using a zipper foot. Um... I was not that confident in my ability to do that, so it was, I think, $4.99 for the zipper foot. It wasn't an exorbitant amount of money, so it was easy enough to get, and I'm very, very happy with this bag. Um, it did take me a while. I am, I'm not a novice stitcher. I took some stitching classes when I was, you know, 4-H kind of class when I was 10 or 11, and then um, one of my aunts um, kind of helped me learn to sew, and so I sewed quite a bit growing up. Um, and then I did not do anything more complicated than sew up the seat of my husband's pants when he ripped them out um, for probably the last 20 years or more. Um, so it wasn't a complete novice, but um, I'm certainly not an experienced, um, you know, professional quality seamstress by any stretch of the imagination. And I found, like I said, both both tutorials very easy to follow. Um, this one, like I said, it's a little bit more complicated because you are having to piece the fabrics together, um, the contrasting front and top, and then the contrasting lining. Um, but it was very, very easy to do. And the only exposed seam in this whole sucker is right down here at the very bottom where you have to seam it closed after you've um, turned it right side out. Um, and it looks very, very finished and professional. I'm real proud of myself with how it came out. The first thing I did, I watched the tutorial all the way through. Um, and I, I watched it again and wrote down step by step. And she references her tutorial to a, um, crafts, a free craftsy class. Um, and I did print that out just so I would have um, the instructions, even though the sizes were incorrect on that. Um, but it's a freebie, and I'll link it in the comments below also. So I wrote down all the steps, and I did screenshots of all of her little pictures of how, um, what sizes you need to cut everything, and then I made myself some pa a pattern, um, and what I did was just cut one for each dimension um, that she mentioned in her tutorial, and I ended up with a total of five pieces. There's one that I don't see right here, but there, there is one more. There it is. Um... And then because, oh, hell's bells. Sorry about that. There we go. Um, there's the fifth piece. And because um, I'm a little memory challenged, I did write on each one of them the dimensions, how many to cut. Like for this one, the main outside fabric, I needed to cut one for the main outside fabric and then cut one interfacing. And I used a, a mid-weight mid -weight fusible interfacing for this, um, and all the, the materials were a lightweight um, poly cotton blend. So this made it real easy. Um, I do use a mat cutter and a rotary cutter to cut with, and I just laid the material down on my mat, held this down on top of it, um, dipped it right along, it worked like a dream. That part was very easy. Um, other than that, it was just following step by step the instructions in her tutorial. Um, it was a little challenging to do the thing where you, when she gets to the part where you unzip it 
halfway. My big fat hands, because I've got man hands, man, I've got big hands. I had a little bit of a hard time grabbing a hold of the zipper to pull it back up um, to the other side of the zipper, but other than that, no problems whatsoever. Um, and I don't know if those are going to show up on the video, but my husband is texting me. So if you see little messages show up, ignore them. Because, as usual, I forgot to put this in airplane mode. But anyway, this probably took me three hours, give or take. I feel like they'll go faster because um, I do plan to make more. But I feel like they'll go much faster once I'm comfortable with the, you know, step-by-step -step doing it. And, like I said, real happy with how it came out. Um, the next tutorial I did was the one by Vonna Epperson Pfeiffer, um, the Twisted Stitcher, and I did the same thing with hers. Watched the video all the way through, wrote down the key points, made myself a pattern like what she did, um, and it just says, yeah, I need to cut one each of the front, the lining, and the interfacing. And I made mine, I think, the same size that she made hers. Um, you could, on both of these, adjust the sizes however you chose to, um, to suit your needs. You could do it smaller, you could do it bigger, whatever floats your boat. Um, this one was so easy to do, with one exception. Um, I think I've mentioned that I have a fairly cheap, um, not super high grade, not fancy in any way, shape, or form kind of sewing machine. It's a genome base model kind of thing. I mean, it sews a straight seam and it zigzags, but that's about what it does. Um, and in Vana's tutorial, she recommends using the fusible fleece, which I did with the first one that I made. But I had real trouble on my machine, and this is the first bag I made. It's already got my Lucy Kate things unseen in there. Um, I had real trouble on my machine at least sewing through the multiple layers of the fusible fleece and the material. Part of that may have been because this is material that I bought eons ago to make cage curtains for a cat show out of it and never used it. And it is a decorator weight cotton fabric. And I don't know if it was because the um, fabric was heavier weight or what, but I literally, on these places right here where the two layers, where there are multiple layers of fabric and two layers of, of the fusible fleece in there, I literally, my pressure foot would not lift high enough to go on there. Um, I broke one needle. I changed out to a jeans um, denim weight needle. Um, I was able to sew through it with that, um, although I had holy hell um, doing the back and forth. Um, so I think that this is a function of, I probably, you know, not, no problem with Vonna's tutorial. Um, this was a function of, I was using a heavier weight cotton and fusible fleece, and I have a real base model sewing machine. Um, but it definitely was doable. It ain't perfect. Ain't nothing I've ever done perfect. Um, and this is no exception, but I took my husband's car into town this morning to get the oil changed, and I toted my little project bag with my cross stitch in there to at the Toyota dealership, and I got three separate comments from people on what a pretty bag I had. So, thanks, Vana. And this one was super easy. Start to finish an hour um, on the second one. The first one I made, this one took me a little bit longer because, like I said, I broke a needle and had trouble with the, the thickness of what I was working on. Um, I think if you stick to your lighter weight cottons, um, the fusible fleece will probably work fine for you. Or if you have a little bit more advanced sewing machine. Um, it probably would work well. When I redo it again, I am going, I don't think my corners look very good and they want to keep flipping up. I have ironed the living bejesus out of this thing and they still want to flip up. Um, and again, I think that may be because they're so thick. I did clip the curves, but still they want to flip up. Um, but, you know, I, I may go try um, with a fusible fleece. My mother-in-law lives next door, God love her, and um, she she is an expert seamstress and has a much, much nicer sewing machine than I do. And I may go try it on her machine with my luck. I'll just break her needle, but I may try it on that with a fusible fleece again before I abandon that because I bought five yards of that stuff, so I, I need to use it. So, 
This is the same bag. This is Vana's tutorial again. Exact same bag. Except on this one, I use that mid-weight interfacing because, you know, I kind of learned my lesson on my machine with the fusible fleece. And came out perfectly. It is not... It doesn't feel as good as the, the fusible fleece really gives it a nice feel. And like um, I carry, <laughs> I tend to take everything with me. Um, I carry my little pin cushion full of needles and stitch markers and needle threader and all that stuff with me. And with the fusible fleece interfacing, you know, you can't feel any of this stuff poking through. I think you might on the, the, the bags with the regular interfacing to some degree. I don't think it would be a huge problem. Um, but anyway, this is Vana's pattern again, and um, I did make a little bit longer piece of stuff because I'm concerned about stuff falling out. Um, the Velcro is a little bit longer than the two inches that she talked about, um, but I'm real, real happy with it. And this one, I literally got done start to finish in an hour. It was super easy, um, and of course, the more you do it, the quicker it'll go, um, but came out great. I'm real happy with it. And I have told myself I'm going to keep doing this because I've got a whole bunch of things that I want to start in 2018 and I'm not going to allow to start myself to start more projects than what I have project bags to put them in. The good news is the last time I went to um, Joanne's, I bought a boatload of material. So um, I'll be making some more project bags and I'm going to make them from both tutorials again. I like both of them. Um, I kind of like this one for a little bit bigger stuff because I did size it um, or double check the size. I can get a full size, you know, if you have eight and a half by 11 size pattern leaflet, it will fit down in here with no problem whatsoever. So here, here's my next project. This lovely threesome is going to be for the next zipper bag, which I'm going to attempt after this. And then this, and I wonder what I did with the, Oh, there it is. There it is. This is going to be for another one of the Vana tutorial bags. So I'm going to make a couple more. Um, hopefully I'll get them done today. If not, they'll probably be um, late this week, possibly even next week, because tomorrow's got to be cookie making day. Um, not really looking forward to that, but you know, it's a tra tradition. I got to do it. Um, so that's, that's what's coming next. Now I mentioned that I had made, um, the first Vana tutorial bag out of some decorator weight fabric that I had bought to do cat show curtains a million years ago. Well, I have, I think, two and a half or three yards of both the exterior print and the one I used for the interior print. And they're two coordinating prints. And since I have so much of both of them, I'm going to give away enough to make a bag. And I think you could make the other, the tutorial from Suzette, the primitive stitcher. I think there would be enough to make one of those bags out of this too. You would just need to add, um, you know, the zipper to it. And there, there is fusible fleece included with both of these. Cause again, I bought a bunch, um, but I'm going to give away two sets of material and they're identical. I just wrapped them, um, you know, with this one on the outside on this bundle and this one on the outside in this one. So I am going to give away two sets of material to make project backs with, um, Rules on this giveaway. I'm the owner of this stuff. It's not sponsored by anything else. You must be 18 years old and a resident of the U.S. to enter. And all you've got to do is to enter is um, subscribe to my FlossTube channel and comment below. Yes, I want to make a project bag. Or, wow, how hard was that? Or, whatever you want to say. Hey, you, what you doing, Goofy? I don't care. Some kind of comment. And, um, you know, like the video. Subscribe, like the video. And comment. And, again, I will use um, a random number generator. Um, and let's say I'm going to pull these on a week from Friday. How's that? I think that's the 30th. So I'll, I'll just assign numbers to everybody's comments and then use a, ra a random number generator to pull out two sets of stuff to make a project bag of your choice of tutorials from. And I'll link those tutorials below. And if you have any questions about anything that I've said, please feel free to ask. I'll do my best to answer. I might know the answer. I might not, but um, I'll search it out if I don't know. How's that? And I thought I would do one little fun thing with y'all. Excuse me one second while I get a drink. I don't know if I mentioned 
Well, I know I mentioned it. We moved a year ago. And I had a bunch of stuff that had been in storage for, since the end of 2007. So a long time. And boxes and boxes and boxes of crap that had been in a storage unit and in South Texas. And that becomes pertinent in a minute. Um, and we moved all that stuff up here because I just didn't have time to go through it all before we moved. And so we moved all that stuff up here and it's been out in a shed in my backyard um, until Sunday because we are finally having electricity run out to the shed um, so it can become a stud room for my stud boy because you can't let the intact boy kitties have the run of the house because you got to know who breeds who when, A, and B, they'll pee all over, all over everything. And I don't want cat pee all over my house. So I love my cats and I love breeding cats, but stud boy has to have his own room. So electricity's going out there this week. The electrician's here today working on it. And so I had to get all the that boils down to is I had to get all the crap out of the shed which is now sitting in my garage and I'm going through it and aggressively weeding stuff which brings me down to I spent all day yesterday in my garage unpacking stuff other than the little bit I took to do a video yesterday because I just needed a break but one of the boxes I unpacked yesterday had this really cute little sewing basket in it which I love. I'm, I'm a big fan of Mary Ingebright stuff and I've loved this forever and I have wondered whatever happened to that Mary Ingebright sewing basket. Well now I know it was in storage since 2007 but I found it now. I'm happy about that and it's full of stitching. Whoops. <laughs> it's full of stitching stuff. It's so full it crap's falling out of it. Happily, one of the things it's full of is another little box of Thread Heaven because, you know, can't have too much Thread Heaven since they're not in business anymore. So I'll add that to my little stash. And then I found this. This is a needle roll I stitched. And it doesn't look like I initialed it. This is a Shepherd's Bush needle roll kit. Um, and apparently I finished stitching this one and, you know, did all the pull thread work and threaded the ribbon through it and then stuck it in this little box and forgot it. So, yay, found, <laughs> found another needle roll. If I can find which pattern, Shepherd's Witch pattern it is, if it's currently in their store, I will also link that below so you know which one it is. Because it's a very pretty little needle roll. It says sheep, sheep at the top. wonder why I picked that one. Um, and then it's got my favorite colors, the pinks and mauves and burgundies in it. And it's got, I don't know if you can see some beadwork on it across here too. So I'm going to finish that up and add it to the other one that I can't leave out because my cats will chew on the ribbon. And then I found another needle roll kit. Now, this one's got all the pieces, parts in it, and apparently I had opened it but never gotten any further than that. But I've got another one to do. I found fat eighth of this really pretty material that I bought God knows when um, called Toasted Mauve. Really, pink, really pretty pink. I don't know what I'll use it for, but I'll add it to my stash. Now, remember when I mentioned that this stuff had been stored outside, you know, in a, well, not outside, but in a, a storage unit since 2007. Let me find the one that that's a problem with. Yep, there we go. I'm so bad because really pretty piece of yellow linen. I have no earthly idea what I started to stitch on here. Not a single flipping clue. So I guess I'll look through my patterns and see if I can figure out maybe what that was supposed to be. It's, I think it's silk floss. It's what it looks and feels like. Um, it looks familiar to you let me know but here's the problem I don't know if y'all can see but right here I have a bad habit of storing my needle in the linen and on this one I don't know if y'all can see right here but there are rust marks because South Texas is an extremely humid environment and apparently being stored um, not in a climate controlled situation although supposedly it was air-conditioned but yeah. Um, anyway, um, I have rust marks on here. 
So, um, we'll see what I can figure out if I am able to get those out or figure out what this is. Or if nothing else, if I can't figure out what it is, I'm going to just, you know, rip it out and I'll use the linen for something else because it's too pretty a color to not use. But you'll notice I have moved the needle over to the side and in a minute I'm actually going to throw that needle away because rusty, 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 not a good thing. Rust is not your friend. Oh, this is actually the, um, the contents, the leftover contents of the, and the pattern and everything for the, um, that needle roll that I've got all done except for the stuffing. Um, I'm looking for something that says the name of it. Shepherd's needle roll. Well, that would make sense. It's a sheep, huh? Anyway, add that pattern back to my stash. And apparently I had some leftover silk floss from it too. So it's just interesting to find this stuff from, you know, eons ago. And here is Silk and Colors. This is what's stitched on that yellow fabric um, that I have no clue what the pattern is. But there's some pretty Silk and Colors thread. I have to add, it, add to my stash, too. And then last but not least... This is Mother's Heart from Shepherd's Bush. And I had started stitching this in before my mom died. And then she passed away and I never finished it. But there it is. And I think I'm going to go ahead and finish it up and give it to my mother-in-law because I love her so dearly. And, you know, Mother's Heart pattern talks about how dear um, the mother is to the children. And JJ is just that dear to me. So I'm going to finish that up. I do know where the pattern is. Why it wasn't in here with the other stuff, who knows. And then there was just a bunch of little miscellaneous stuff that I really don't know why. But there's all these little um, Mill Hill treasures, which um, for a buck fifty-six a piece, I figure they, you know, had been around for a while. There's like six or seven different ones. So I'll add those to my stash too. So anyway, that was a very happy little surprise for me to find. I was thrilled about that. Oh, and two more pair of scissors. I don't know if they're still sharp or not, you know, since they were stored in the crappy storage too. But you can never have too, more, bleh, 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 too many scissors, right? So anyway, that was my happy surprise for today was to find that little box and um, find this stuff in it. And hopefully I'll be able to get the rust stains out of that one that's marred. Y'all cross your fingers for me on that. But as always, thanks so much for watching, you guys. I sure do appreciate it. I appreciate all the nice comments. And um, the fact that I'm up to over 200 subscribers just blows my mind. Um, Y'all, please keep watching. I, I don't know that I have all that much to offer, but I'm thrilled to blither on about it. Um, don't forget, giveaway for Project Bag Fabrics. Um, subscribe, comment, like. I'll draw those on, what do we say, the 29th? Maybe it's the 30th. A week from Friday. New Year's Day is on Monday. No, the 29th is right. That's right. Sorry, no camera in front of me and, you know, brain fuzz. Well, I'm going to go see if my electrician's making any progress. And then I'm going to try to make some progress myself on a couple of project bags. Um... Look up those tutorials. They're awesome. Y'all are probably way ahead of me on this thing, but you know, I'm just thrilled to have found them and, and very happy with what I've done so far. And I will look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye, y'all.